All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this problem is a little bit different, right? And when you're having this, writing this down, because right, this is one of your homework, right? Right? Of your homework. It doesn't matter, but you can have it written down, and then you can go and figure out what it is. Um, so, if you guys have two times sine squared of two x, one thing I want you guys to remember: when you have that two x inside of your function, I want you guys to kind of forget about it for right now, okay? When we're, as far as we're worrying about solving for our x values, I don't want you to solve for this because this is inside of your function, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find the values first and then we'll deal with the two. So what I'll do is I will, I'm just gonna sign, solve for this without that two in there, just because I don't want you guys to worry about that, okay? Just like how I said, if you guys are having trouble, solve it without the without um, the trig function, right? If you're having trouble, just solve it without the trig function. So here, what would you do? You divide by two, and just take the square root, right? Well, here, same thing. Divide by two, sine squared of x equals one half. Take the square root. Okay, so we get sine of x equals the rest, remember that's the square root of one over the square root of two. Right? What? what? Do I put the two back in there? Where you, where's your question? Do you understand why I divided by two? Well, I don't know what just happened. Why did the two disappear? I don't know where yeah. I, no, I showed you guys, I'm I, 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 the only reason, I didn't disappear it. I told you when I wanted you to solve for it, an easy way to solve for it is not to let that 2 bother you and just solve it as just the x, okay? Well, it's not a 2, it's... Well, I don't even know okay, if I didn't write the sign and I just wrote 2x okay. x squared equals 1, what are you guys doing? You're just using your inverse properties. I'm trying to simplify this as much as possible. Divide by 2 and then take the square root. No. So it's the same thing. You your 2 is being multiplied by your sign, so you're going to divide by 2. And then you need to get rid of the squaring. So you square root it, and you get the square root of 1 over 2. And I'll just, like I said, I'll put the 2x in there so I don't confuse anybody else. But you take the square root, it's 1 over 2, which is the radical 1 over um, radical 2. Well, the square root of 1 is 1. So you have 1 over radical 2, which equals 1 over radical 2. Since this is a sign, I'm going to have to rationalize my denominator. So I get radical 2 over 2. Sine of 2x equals radical 2 over 2. Now, here's the point where I didn't want to confuse you, why I didn't like writing x. Now we have to go ahead and find the value of my radical 2 over 2. We're not solving, and again, we're not going to, a lot of people want to divide the, by this x by 2. This is inside your function, okay? So you're not going to be doing that. So now we need to find when does sine equal radical 2 over 2? What two points does it equal? Well, you could say x equals pi over 4, and x equals 3 pi over 4. Right? OK? But it's not x. It's actually 2x equals pi over 4, and 2x equals 3 pi over 4. Does that make sense? Because that's what you're solving for is in your 2x. Now we're solving for 2x, not just for x. So that's the difference. When you have inside your functions, you have that 2x, you're not solving for your x, you're solving for your 2x. So now you need to divide by 2. And what you'll get is x over 8. And here you get 3 pi over 8. Then the same thing is going to happen with your solutions. Add 2 pi n plus 2 pi n. You mean pi over 8? Yeah, it's pi. I don't know why I'm my x thing. Pi over 8. Okay, good, good question. Here, here, my two answers are right here, right? So, hey guys, in the back, a good question was asked. They said, how do you determine if it's plus 2 pi or plus pi? 
Well, my two answers are over here. The distance between these two is not pi, right? So to get to this next answer, I need to add pi again, right? Right? For here, to get to my next answer, I need to add again pi to get to the same answer, right? Well, if I had a unit, if I had a circle where instead of my two answers being there and there, if my two answers were here and here, to get to this next one, I have to add, I can just add pi to get to that answer, and then add pi again to get to that answer. So it just kind of breaks up. So the only time you're going to be adding pi is when they're like pi degrees away from each other. Here, my answers were not, so I had to do them separately. Make sense?